We've been working on some very cool new active speaker technology, and the first place you're gonna see this is in our new Zio soundbar. A lot of our products now are active speakers, and what that means is that inside the loudspeaker cabinet, we've got the preamp, the DSP, we have one amplifier per driver normally, and with that, we can change how we do things. We don't have to do things in the same way that have been done for 80 years with a voltage amplifier. And we've been trying to challenge ourselves. We really challenged ourselves to make the LS60 something that you couldn't achieve passively. With a passive speaker, always using what we call a voltage amplifier. So what that means is the musical signal you want to hear, it goes into your amplifier, and the amplifier presents that to the loudspeaker as the same signal as a voltage. But the interesting thing is that in terms of a loudspeaker motor, the force that it will generate that's applied to the cone and causes the cone to move, that's actually proportional to the electrical current coming out the amplifier, not the voltage. So you have to start to ask the question, well, what determines how much electrical current is going to come out the amp? And the answer is, it's the impedance of the loudspeaker or the load of the loudspeaker. And this is where you start to encounter issues because the load is not something that's very nicely defined. So you have certain behaviors in there which can cause distortions. So a simple one, for example, is as the loudspeaker driver gets hot, the resistance of the wire goes up and then we get less current and that causes power compression. And most of the other effects you can think of as different types of electromagnetic induction. Magnetic fields changing around the coil which cause EMFs or voltages to appear on the coil. And there's several of those, but one of the key ones is what we call motional EMF. And this is like an electromagnetic damping or breaking as the cone's moving. Now, this one is actually very useful because it's what controls the cone movement. But you also get a whole load of other effects which introduce nonlinearities and distortion. So what we're really interested in doing is switching the amplifier. So that instead of having a voltage amplifier, we change it to a current amplifier which directly represents your music signal in the current. And the benefit would be we can get rid of a lot of these effects which cause nonlinearity and distortion and problems. But there's a big issue with that because we really need that back EMF, that motional impedance which controls the cone motion at low frequencies. So that's where our velocity sensor comes in. By having the velocity sensor picking up the motion of the cone in real time and putting that in a feedback loop, so we can control the cone and still get the benefits of a current amplifier. So this sensor we've developed has been a long time coming. It was something that we've been trying to find a way to do for a long time. What we ended up thinking was the best approach for us was to use an electromagnetic velocity sensor. Effectively, our sensor is a second coil and we call that the sensing coil and a second motor and we call that the sensing motor. So we have a coil which is immersed in a magnetic field. And as the coil moves, it generates an EMF which we're picking up. But the difficulty with this is if you try and do this with a conventional second coil, which is helically wound and close to the primary voice coil, then you get a transformer coupling effect, which you really don't want. Because what that does is it means that your sensor isn't just picking up the velocity of the cone, it's also got a component of the signal you're sending to the voice coil. So you're not getting 100% the velocity. And the clever trick we've done is find a way to arrange the geometry of the sensing coil and the geometry of the sensing motor so we get rid of this transformer coupling effect. So the way that our sensor works is actually very simple. Even though it has a complicated geometry, what we have is a coil of wire in a magnetic field. And as the coil moves, it changes the magnetic flux that the coil sees, and that creates an EMF, or a voltage, at the coil's terminals that's proportional to velocity. It's, in effect, exactly the same behavior that you get from a, a moving coil cartridge. And we take that voltage and we put it in a negative feedback loop around the amplifier. And this has two effects. It reintroduces the damping effect on the cone motion. It controls the cone motion as if you had a voltage amplifier but it also linearizes that motion at the same time. So the net result is twofold. We can use a current amplifier, which gives us the best possible operation at mid-range and high frequencies, and we also gain more control and linearization of the cone motion at low frequencies.
There are some differences which are advantageous with what we're doing. So one of the main ones is that the moving part is on the former itself and actually takes no extra space. So we can easily integrate this into very compact motors or motors where there is a lot going on. For example, a UniQ where you might have a tweeter. It's also extremely lightweight and the velocity it picks up is more or less an average of the whole coil rather than the acceleration of a specific point on the cone where you might have some local resonance. I think fundamentally there's also a little bit of a difference in our philosophy here. We're only using the feedback specifically at low frequencies and we're feeding back velocity. So it really is the equivalent of the damping effect of a voltage amplifier. In the mid-range and high frequencies, we don't think you really need to use feedback from the sensor at all. If you have a well-behaved motor and use current drive, you get all the benefits you need in that area. The benefits of this technology are dramatically lower mid-range and high frequency distortion due to the current drive amplifier. In addition, an elimination of power compression due to the current drive amplifier and a dramatic reduction in low frequency distortion due to the velocity feedback. All of this leads to real audible benefits and we can apply this technology over a wide range of products at a wide range of prices.